Sam Hewen. Hello, mate. Hello. How are you? Good. Yes, in the sweat box. Yeah, I know it gets incredibly hot in here. We will start to become one with these chairs eventually. Good. But um, this is probably, at this stage, my second favourite place I've interviewed you in person. Ah, where was the first? I'm going to let you guess. I mean, we've done, what, three interviews in person? Yeah. 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 I mean, do you want me to tell you? Or do I... you... I think probably the favourite one was outside the Eiffel Tower, was it? Yeah, 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 in one. That was incredible. I mean, I think they call it magic hour, you know, when the light is just was perfect. golden, yeah. Sunset, sunlight on the Seine. The, the Eiffel Tower, just the lights glittering as they, they lit up. I think we almost had a couple of glasses of champagne mm. um, while we uh, gorilla filmed s- some... some um, illegal filming around the Eiffel Tower <laughs> and then prepared to run away from the gendarmes. So. I know. You sort of watch movies and you think, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all it's all done legit, fully permitted up. Mm. And then the truth is, it's like, just turn the camera on. Turn the camera on and make sure no one's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like you're not doing anything. Yeah. Because that was, that was the unofficial rap party. Sort of unofficial rap party to SAS Red Notice. That's right. It turned into a rap party. It did. It was the, we'd shot in Budapest uh, where you had come also to, to interview us in the, so the freezing cold. Oh, that was my fault, though, because you were dressed properly for that weather. And I was like, ooh, I'll put on my stylish coat. Yeah. Bad idea. That was the coldest I've ever been. You look stylish, though. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Yeah, and then we and then we uh, obviously in Paris to finish the sort of that section uh, of SES. And then I think we actually filmed, I think we filmed in London or was that after? I can't remember. We did pickups. Uh, we went to Spain as well. So uh, you've been on quite the journey no, with us on that movie. I really felt like I, I was on a journey. And that night was great. A lot of wine was quaffed. Mm. I did get a bit of anxiety when we were in that Chinese restaurant. You know, when you get that thing, I was like, are we that table? Are, yeah. we, are, we, <laughs> are we the Brits abroad? I think we were. Not us, particularly. The other people at the table. Yeah, yeah, we were quite civilized. But I think yeah, there was a large group of us uh, that consisted of, you know, uh, drunk actors um, you know, financiers, mm. producers, uh, a psychopath, uh, <laughs> and, and, and yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it yeah. was fun. It's always the investors. Always the investors who start you the off. The worst, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's blame them. Yeah. Let's, let's blame the people who made your movie happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to go around business, right? So how is it then? You've just finished outlander season six yeah in london uh Mm. decompression do you have to decompress yeah yeah honestly i was just saying to you outside there we were just chatting and it um it really is a sort of transitional moment and it it, it's sort of sometimes you hard it it takes me very hard to sort of switch off and and for the first few days after shooting and completing a season of outlander you know you're sort of still on this almost hamster wheel of getting things done and doing things so i came to london to have a bunch of meetings and uh, and various things going on but it, suddenly it's just dawned on me you know i'm like i'm done and it is to be fair the shortest season we've done it's only eight eps mm. but it was potentially one of the hardest you know because we were shooting during a pandemic and there were just a lot of factors involved that made it you know pretty difficult to shoot so uh so i'm yeah i've been celebrating i've been enjoying being amongst people again mm. <laughs> and you know things opening up as well you know in scotland we've been in a, a kind of a lockdown a lot more strict than you guys have in, in england so um, it's nice to actually see people. So you've been what, about four months filming up there? Started was it February? We started January the third. Oh wow! Yeah. How isolated are you up there? Because obviously, I know you've got a studio just outside Glasgow that you do mm. a lot of stuff in. But then, like when you're filming actually out in rural Scotland, yeah. like, are you are you away from everything? Do you stay in a trailer? Are you camping? I oh, guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're basically, they they're, yeah they've they've upgraded us now to. <laughs> To like, you know, not the pop-up tent, but now I've got it. Uh... <laughs> glamping. Yes, glamping. <laughs> that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Um, I've often thought that as well. You know, when you get like your your car- your trailers, you know, your unit base, which is, you know, obviously all your trailers there and everyone has their own one. I'm like, why do we bother going to stay in a hotel? Just <laughs> stay in your trailer. Mm. And you would have to get, wouldn't have to get up as early. But um, no, we are. We, we, we're primarily at our studios, which are fantastic, uh, that have grown from, you know, a dusty old warehouse that ha- sort of, you could call it a sound stage. To now, we have you know five full sound stages. We have a whole back lot, which is a whole uh, town, frontier town, pretty much. You know, set in the uh, late seventeen hundreds in in America, 
Um, and then we shoot all around Scotland. We were just shooting up in Glencoe the last three days, and it really was. There's st- still snow up there on the mountains. <laughs> there's of course midges. There's everything else, oh. but it but it it was stunning, and it very it felt very much you know that is Outlander. I mean, I love that part of the world. I s- spent most summer holidays for about a decade on on the west coast of Scotland. So like Arran, mm. Sky, mm-hmm. Oban, Malague, Arisaig, yeah. all up there, and actually not far from Glencoe, about an hour away, Loch Awe. Loch Awe like, is stunning. Mm. It's, uh, I, I'm glad you said that because I love the West coast of Scotland and, you know, people do go up, especially tourists and they'll drive around the, the North coast 500 or they go to Edinburgh or whatever, but, but the islands are the mm. most magical part. And I think, you know, p- part of our TV show that I created men in kilts was about that, about trying to introduce people to that side. Mm. It was quite, very magical. So now you've finished out under scene six, are you happy? Cause obviously you're a producer on it now. So I guess mm. you've got. More concerns, more pressure, right, on your shoulders. Yeah. But are, are you walking away happy with what you've done in the it, with this season? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's been challenging. I think uh, just you know shooting through a Scottish winter. I think during a pandemic, it was weird. You know, we'd go to work, especially at the start, and it was you know we didn't know what was going to happen. I just finished a movie in London, which had similar protocols. You know, the the COVID protocols, but to be in Scotland and to see no one on the roads driving to work, and just to be in this world where you know it felt like we were the only people at work mm. it was kind of crazy so um yeah but i'm really pleased with this this season and it does as i said it feels it feels like almost like early uh, early western vibe to it wow um and you know we're building up to the war of independence and the, there's it's obviously there's time travel as well and mm. there's all these other elements so yeah it feels it feels like a small but mighty uh season because you've been doing it, what, how long have you been playing Jamie Fraser now? Seven, seven years, is it? I Going think, on seven years. Almost eight, yeah. Wow. And um, yeah, it's it's mad how fast it goes. And uh, it's been a, quite a journey. And I, I, I feel very fortunate. You know, it's changed my life, definitely, and given me a lot of opportunities. Um, but it's mad, you know, you look back. I've, even being in this near the studio, you know, I used to live near here. Mm-hmm. And sort of looking back when I was, you know, a, a jobbing actor or trying to get into the industry, and thinking, what would it be like to to be in a TV show of my own? <laughs> How was it though that first audition? Like, when do you remember it? Like, like it was yesterday. Did you have to audition for Outlander? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd I so I'd been in America. I'd done this um, arena tour called Batman Live, where I played Batman and Bruce Wayne, and it was ridiculously <laughs> amazing. This is one of those jobs you never think you'll ever do. And then I'd spent like I think almost four or five months staying in Los Angeles for pilot season and uh, I got pretty close on a, a number of jobs but not got them and came back to London I was feeling pretty despondent and, and you know spent all my money and it was just at this point I was 30 34 uh, and just thinking can I keep doing this and then I had this audition uh, and I remember when I read it I just was like oh yeah I, I know this guy like I can do this mm. it was strange I think it really was all about timing um, because also then when I went to do my audition one of my best friend's wives was the auditioner. She was there. So it just suddenly put me at ease. Wow. And then she brought my best friend in or one of my best friends in to test with me on the screen test. So it was just like <laughs> all these sort of... Uh, wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, the perfect storm of uh, feeling comfortable. In, yeah. Because those things must be terrifying. Oh, they're terrifying. Yeah. And I think they've changed a lot. But, you know, I, I've had experiences where, you know, there's... It used to in the old days, you go in and you, especially in America, you test for the the studio, the network, and there'd be like, the lawyers are there, they're, they're, <laughs> their, their mom, their dog, you know, like it was just like a whole, like a group of 20 people just sitting watching you do a scene. Uh-huh. And it really was such an odd experience. Mm. But I think it's changed a little bit now. America's weird. I once did a, a, an audition for E! Channel in America as, nice. a, as, a, as a host. And um, I, I, just because I'd done it in the UK, I just, I rewrote the script they gave me mm. and I did it. And the look on their faces, they were like, what are you doing? What? <laughs> Just read what we've written. It Wrong. was it was like heresy that wow. I <laughs> changed their words. So wow. didn't get the job. Didn't get that job. No. Yeah, you've upset the whole writers' <laughs> union now as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I found a, a lovely quote from uh, Diana Gabaldon uh, when you were first cast. Uh, I'm not going to do an impression. Oh, uh, go on. Of her. <laughs> you, okay. She speaks. She's got this. She's got this beautiful sing-song voice, yeah. and she speaks crazy fast, doesn't she? As well. Yeah. Yeah, she does. She has quite a unique voice, yeah. I'll give it a shot. All right, go on. That man is a Scott to the bone and Jamie Fraser to the heart. 
that's really good. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Don't. I can see what you're doing. You're no. trying to make me feel better about that moment in I my mean, life. She's from, you know, Germany. <laughs> yeah, it's good. No, no, that's great. <laughs> but oh. what a lovely, what a lovely thing to hear. Because obviously, um, I had no idea. I uh, genuinely no idea. Just how I mean, I knew the books were popular, yeah. but they're one of the best selling book series in the world. Yeah. Like, they've sold more than Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mm -hmm. they've sold more than His Dark Materials, more than Bridget Jones. It's huge, yeah, huh? It's huge. I, I believe she's also, I remember there was a quote, she also said that I was grotesque. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, when I she, didn't find that, I didn't read that didn't, one. Can you imagine? Look, yeah, <laughs> that man is grotesque. Well, in uh, what context? Um, so it, it, you know. She, she's very clever. She has a way with words as well. But I think she'd seen the headshot that I'd taken. And it was like, this man is not Jamie Fraser. He's grotesque from this picture. But then right. when she saw the, the audition, she thought I was him. So, yes. How quickly did you get a new headshot after that? that Straight is... away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the phone to oh, that photographer. God, can we do it, another one? You know when I said make me look good? It was gl the word was glamorous, not grotesque. Gr yes, yes. Lost in translation. <laughs> but um, no, she's been great. And she's been such a support and a friend. And throughout the years, you know, always touch base with her. And she's written episodes as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a remarkable. And it has this great fan base. And I think... I was totally unaware of it when I first got the job. I, if I'd known about the fan base, I mm -hmm. think I probably would have thought twice because it just would have been so overwhelming, I think. I, I can imagine. I, I once interviewed um, Robert Pattinson at the first Twilight premiere. Oh, wow. he, he did. And the scream was like, nothing else I'd ever heard. And he, the first thing he said to me uh, when I was like, what do you make of that? He was like, it's not for me. It's for the character. That first word out of his mouth. He, yeah. The immediate sort of distancing between the two. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's true. I think... Uh, I think, you know, playing a, an iconic character, and I think Jamie Fraser is definitely one, you know, it's like, y y people are, they're ob obsessed with these characters because they're so invested in them and they want them to be real and they want them to, to they want to get as close to them as possible. So I think sometimes it is hard for people to separate the actor from the character. Mm. Um, and I think he's done a, a, he did a great job of sort of going in a different mm. direction, didn't he? Afterwards? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess the the positive of that not that it's a negative where they can't separate although sometimes you hear about soap stars in particular just getting abused on the street because they're yeah. playing a villain in the, this series arc and people are like you find you ruined it how dare you yeah but um but yeah i mean the other side is just how loyal the fans of so outlander are so loyal we we're so thankful for them they've followed us through this journey and um they also not only support the Outlander, but any project that we do, any charity work that we do, mm. uh, myself, my co-stars, they support wholeheartedly. And, and honestly, we can't thank them enough. And it's a shame, you know, right now with the pandemic, I think not being able to sort of do these fan events because they're always really nice, especially comic cons, you know, where you get to sort of get to see people's excitement about, about the thing that you've been working on for so long. Because you sometimes forget when mm. you're, you know, day in, day out on set, you kind of forget that people are anticipating seeing the next one hmm. i mean like you said you've been away for a while before um outlander and obviously you're a scot you're a proud scot hmm. is there any other kind uh no uh, <laughs> no i think we are quite proud i think but i think it's i think scots have become like more proud recently hmm. i think in the past you know remember that train spotting quote you know shit being scottish <laughs> the lowest of the low <laughs> and now you know it's like we have some pride we've always got pride in ourselves but i think there's this pride in scotland i think it is it's, it feels quite f progressive at the moment mm. and uh we're doing things slightly differently out there yeah how did your relationship change with it then once you got outlander because like i said you've been away for a while did your relationship with scotland change once you were back there like mm. and have been for like nearly the past decade yeah yeah it t totally has you know so i came to london and um, I'd been here 12 years and I guess worked on and off in Scotland, but I think sort of almost doing Outland has become, you know, become a, almost an ambassador for Scotland. Right. Mm. And I think I did, I fell in love with my country again and I fell in love with the outdoors and hiking and climbing. And that's kind of how my charity fundraiser, my peak challenge started. And then also, for instance, even men in kilts, the, the show that I created and, and the book I did as well, Clanlands, it's, it's all about sort of sharing that that love of Scotland and I and I am I'm, pr I'm a proud Scot so 
Yeah. Men in kilts, man. I mean, that must, I know, I know you created it, but still, what a dream show. Someone who loves Scotland, uh, yeah. traveling around Scotland. Yeah. If, if, if people haven't seen it yet, it's, um, it's Amazon Prime that it's on over here. Stars in America. Amazon yeah, Stars Prime. UK here. Mm. Stars UK, yeah, which stars, I think you can, Stars play, yeah. Yeah. Um, I got it through Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds mm -hmm. now like I'm sponsored by Amazon Prime. I'm not. Yeah. Um, but if <laughs> They are taking over the world. So. If, if you're listening, Amazon, how are yeah, you doing? Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be lovely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's you and uh, Graham McTavish, your, yep. your co-star from Outlander. Uh, people will also know him as Dwalin from the Hobbit films. Mm. It's basic. It's the two of you bickering on a road yeah. trip around Scotland. Yeah, it it's is. It's hilarious. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you thought that. And yeah, it was. It was. It was. I was shooting Outlander two seasons ago, and I just thought, I, I, I've always loved the Highlanders part of the show and the, the season one, that kind of thing. And I wanted to look, I looked for, to create my own sort of IP or my own TV show around Scottish Highlanders. At that point, I was chatting to Graham, and he'd also had an idea years ago about doing a historical documentary. And it just seemed, it just seemed to work. And we, we went over a number of weekends. Uh, I financed it. I got a crew together. Um, we got some guests on board and, and it just sort of, it just came together. And I think it was really this camper van and the fact that we're both bickering. Uh, <laughs> a lot. Completely <laughs> so competitive. It's thinly veiled competition. And, um, and it's so fun. And then I realized as well, you know, he's a, he's a big pussycat and I love winding him up and it's, uh, it's great fun. Yeah, you do. It's, um, it's the what is the which is the episode the witchcraft episode oh, yeah. um mm. i mean if you i'd recommend anyone watch that if you want to see a grown man nearly have a heart attack repeatedly yeah i'm i'm surprised he didn't kill over at some point like he, yeah. there is you're genuinely scaring the shit out of him in that episode yeah i mean i mean there's some generally scary stuff as well we go to the Black Mausoleum in Greyfriars Kirkyard oh, in Edinburgh. Yeah. And it is, there is something really sinister about that place. Uh, you know, a large number of people have died there and this is whole dark history. But um, yeah, I mean, it's anything to wind him up and, and I did work out ways to do that. But, but also, you know, we are slightly playing up to the camera. You know, yeah. we are playing caricatures of ourselves. But yeah, he's a big, he, he plays all these like gruff, strong warriors. Yeah. But really, deep down, he's, he's a complete... Um, Pussycat. It's yeah. why he's such a it's why he's such a good actor though, because like he isn't he's an actor when yeah. you see him in the yeah. show. He's like and yeah. then you're like, wow, mm. like Dwalin and like and yeah. it's yeah, and Dougal. You're sort of like he's very good. We we like to call him on set. We used to call him Lady McTavish because you know, <laughs> he'd come on all gruff and right, right, yeah. Uh, uh, and he's sort of being very aggressive in his in his take, but he'll do like one or two takes and then he's done. <laughs> and then he's demanding his cafe latte and his, his snacks. And uh, we're we're very, very fond yeah. of him and he's he's a great friend. Yeah. I honestly I did think that you know, you watch it and obviously working in TV, you sort of go, where is the where are you playing up to the camera? And when has it got a little too real? Because there's that weird thing when you make someone jump, like because mm. it, it's a reflex thing. When when you're made to jump in front of people, never mind a TV audience, there are, there are two responses. One is that you sort of laugh and you're like, okay, I laughed. Yeah. The other is you go fucking livid yeah. and you're like, actually, no, I'm furious that I've been embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did he ever lose it? I think you see it in actually that episode, Witchcraft and Superstition, I think it's episode four. And that we got, I got this person to jump out of him uh, at the kirkyard, and he was expecting something. So we, I left it and left it and left it, and we created the situation. It was right at the very end of the day, so he thought nothing was going to happen. And you can see he's like, ah, and he's going to swear, and then he's, he doesn't know whether to hug me or to punch me. And and obviously the cameras are on, so he's he's having to hold it back. Uh, what was uh, your favorite thing to do on that on that road trip? Uh, let let me ask. Was it? Visiting the Lafroy Distillery. <laughs> ah, my man. <laughs> yeah, listen, I mean, Good only man. because I know it's still early, but it would uh, you're oh, a, it'd be rude not to. You're a whiskey it? man. Oh, I know you're dear. a whiskey man. Just a, a small, a wee dram. Oh, come on. This is more like it. Good man. Yeah. So we did. We, we visited uh, Isla. Um, oh, that sound. I know. Isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great excuse to drink, basically, at this time, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, yeah, we we did. I, I mean, I have my own whiskey, right? My own whiskey brand, and mm. um, I think uh, you know, just I have such a passion for whiskey, and and wanted to sort of impart that knowledge to other people. And people don't know, you know, they don't un quite understand where whiskey comes from or how it's made. And so, yeah, I got to go and sample some fine beverages. Yeah, yeah, you did. I mean, it looks great. We'll talk about your whiskey. Let's have, let's first do go this. On, I thought maybe just as uh, as a bit fun. 
Well, we should both have a a, a, a little sip and then um, and then see who can pull the best face. This is only work for the video element of this okay, show. Okay, yeah, there's a, there's a camera. There's a camera. I will pull the best face and it basically says, I've been taken back to the misty glens in the rolling hills of Scotland. Uh, and apologies for... Is that offensive that I just did that accent? No, it's actually quite good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. It's also the voice always lowers, doesn't it? Yeah, the misty glens. <laughs> 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 Wait, you do it. You do it. People want to hear you do it, not me. That's maybe that's maybe just because you've drank too much whiskey. It sort of just <laughs> coats the larynx. Okay, the, so it's going to take you back home to Scotland. Hmm. I'll, I'll go first. Right, go on, Where's your camera? Uh, it's mine up there. Here okay, we go. Okay. This is mine. Okay. Uh, the whiskey glens, <laughs> the mountains, a stag running free, <laughs> Outlander fans. <laughs> following you <laughs> alright yeah. Oh, yeah I was laughing a bit too much but alright here Slanger. we go so your, your turn Slanger. he's been taken back to those outlander oh look at that that's it Woo. that'll do oh, oh, it's nice though right hairs on your chest it? were you always a whiskey lover um, <clears throat> I mean, you're Scottish, so I mean, do they not yeah. give you one on your way out of the hospital on yeah. day one? Yeah, they rub your gums with them, <laughs> don't they? But um, uh, do you know? Interestingly, I mean, I I wasn't really until I moved to London, and then uh, short story is that I was in London. I was pretty homesick. I've been here uh, about a year, and I was with a good Scottish friend of mine. It was one Christmas. Went into a bar, and we were looking at that top shelf, and mm. we were like, "Oh, let's 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 have a whiskey," out. and it. Just having that whiskey, we suddenly started reminiscing about Scotland and how much we missed it. And, and it took us back home to Scotland in a way, in a sense. And that's what out of my whiskey, you know, our tagline is spirit of home, because wherever you are, you can have your whiskey and it takes you back. I know. I feel kind of embarrassed that uh, I don't have your whiskey to hand. Well, Sassanac I was, is what it's called. I, it's called Sassanac. I was going to bring you some, but we, we're, we've actually sold out, but we're about to do another big release in mm. August. Uh, and it's I'm just so excited. It's done so well. We've won... Multiple, multiple saw, uh, yeah. gold medals. We've got a few more we haven't even announced yet. And we're working on some other really special stuff. Hence the reason I'm sweating today is because I was testing it last <laughs> night. But, uh, but it was good. Is it's it good? good? It's so good. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I looked. That's that's how I know that you've sold out as well. Because I went, I'll, I'll get some. And then it was like, sold out. I'm like, things are going well. I'll send you one. I'll send you one in August. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I've got... I recently, at my local pub, um, they had a guy come down from um, the Glenfiddich Distillery. Yeah. Uh, and it, we did this tasting where you actually try different foods with like a single malt or a blended in different yeah. ages. Yeah. And the effect that the whiskey has on your palate when you try those foods, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Food pairing and whiskey is, is a good, and I, I guess, you know, with chocolate and everything, it's, it's there's so many different things. And mm -hmm. also, I mean, I don't know if you're a cigar man, but... Uh, I, I I dabble with them occasionally, and I was trying different whiskies with cigars, and even that's quite interesting. It really does um, changes. It's uh, yeah, it's it's fascinating. Mm. He also told this story, and I didn't fact check this because I just want it to be true. So I didn't want I didn't want to find out that he just made it up. But he said that obviously when the the, the Japanese got into whiskey making, yeah, they um, they wanted to you know replicate what uh, the Scots were doing with Scotch mm. whiskey. Mm. And they were informed that actually Scotch whiskey is called Scotch uh, because it uses water from Scotland. Yep. And you're in Japan. Yeah. So you can't do that. Yeah. And so they then, next to the distillery, built a town and called it Scotland and used the water oh, from there. I hope that's true. <laughs> so I they could call true. it Scotch. I hope that's true. I, I do know that that because uh, Japanese blends were really popular and they're so good. They're single malts as well right now, but they, they, I believe they took a lot of our barrels and there was a particular distiller, I think who went over um, and sort of started the whole scene over in Japan, like, you know, whatever it was, you know, 50 years ago or whatever, but it's, um, it's so big over there now. Mm. What is there? There's one that I really like. Hibi Hibiki? Hibiki. Hibiki. Yeah. 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 Beautiful bottle as well. It's a beautiful bottle. Uh, and that's kind of what we were, basing our whiskey on you know like all these great blends coming out of asia and you're mm. like well scotland you know blended whiskey is generally a dirty word you know <laughs> and uh, so we wanted to create something that was you know a blend it was easy it was easy to drink like them quite quite balanced but um yeah hopefully we've uh we'll continue to do that mm. yeah and um, going back to men in kilts I, I will say one of the most striking images is um is you uh in a kilt uh with your top off and a 
flaming torch dancing around a fire at a pagan festival. Yeah, not sure what happened there. <laughs> you really yeah. do, talking about what we said earlier. Where where is it? Where's reality stepping into this? And actually, everyone's forgotten this is a TV show. You did. There's a look in your eye that's gone. I'm here. <laughs> this is this is real now. I've been taken by the pagan gods. Yeah, right. So we recreated Beltane, which is this pagan festival, and it's part of the equinox, right? The celebration of I think it's uh, spring into summer, um, and uh, it normally falls on my birthday and thirtieth uh, of April, and. We, as a child, I used to go to these pagan festivals in Edinburgh. I used to have a big procession. There's druids and there's people dancing. And traditionally, you're supposed to stay up all night. And you must, uh, the women are supposed to wash wash their face in the morning dew. They go to sleep that day and they'll dream of their their partner, um, their their future husband. Um, I didn't do that. But, <laughs> but we wanted to recreate it. So we had this big bonfire and we had all these um, great dancers and people there. And... Uh, to be honest, we were drinking a lot of tequila. <laughs> now and, that's my spirit of joy. Right? And so uh, we're making it look like we're drinking whiskey. It was actually tequila. And uh, I, Graham and I would had quite a few. And by the end of it, we were just <laughs> we were just going for it. So, uh, oh, yeah. You can see it. You can see it in your eyes. You look like you're having the best. Everyone. All, I, think it's, I think you get taken by the moment on occasions like that. But all the people that you had there, all the dancers and everything, they looked like they were taking it very seriously yeah. as well. And you must have got swept up in it. Yeah, we did. And I think, I think to be honest, the whole show. I think, to be honest, everyone had a good time. We were this sort of small group of, a uh, small crew, small group of people, and we just just had such a blast, you know, going around Scotland. And, and when do you get to do that? Um, so I think the whole, I think I hopefully that energy comes through in the, in the whole show. You know, people are just having a good time. Oh, it does. It does. And also, you rock a leather jacket and kilt very well. I love that look. It's like premium era Axl Rose. Yeah. Very <laughs> yes. cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I just need some more jewellery. But um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, again, you know, Scotland has this sort of very twee tradition of kilts and it's you know, kind of dated and it's nice to be able to try and bring it more modern and update that that look. And I love a kilt. Oh, if how many do you want today? It would be more <laughs> cool. You would be a lot cooler. Yeah. Although uh, from the angle in this room, yeah, I don't know how. so good. I don't know how authentic. I don't even know if that's a myth or not where, you know, the whole you don't wear anything under a kilt. Is that true? I guess you'll have to wear a kilt to find out. But I'll tell you what, it is very liberating. I bet it is. It's very liberating. Very um, comfortable. How many kilts do you own? Do you know what? I've got a fair few. I bet you do. I've yeah. got a fair number now. Yeah. Yeah. I've got sort of ones for different occasions. <laughs> and um, and I've got this great kilt maker uh, called Howie, who we featured in the show, but actually he didn't make the cut, unfortunately. Sorry, Howie. But, <laughs> oh, uh, does he know yet? Was that you announcing <laughs> it to Howie? Him. But his kilts are in the show quite a lot. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's so much we had to cut, and it was, you know, I guess it's one of these things you, you know, sort of have to to sacrifice a lot. But yeah, I do have a, a large number of kilts, and I really love it. I love wearing them. Mm. I have one kilt uh, from uh, the Clan McLaren, and I'm not a tourist, so uh -huh. my gran was really into tracing back our family tree, and she traced it back as far as a, a guy called Mungo Lawrence who came down to England in the 1600s, uh -huh. and then we went up to Scotland and traced Lawrence, the name, back to the Clan McLaren. So I, I then wow. bought a kilt from... McLaren. Yeah. Oh, you're like, it's like Highlander, isn't it? It feels a little like bit you're like... You're coming home. I know. Like it's the only one. It's nice. I, I feel like that. I feel like Alex McLaren of the Clan McLaren, <laughs> and I am immortal. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You could be the next... They're remaking that, I believe. Huh? Oh, oh they've probably. Been trying to for a long time. It would not surprise me. Yeah, it would not surprise me. Yeah. if they were. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's nice. I sort of, I f it's sort of, it's one of those weird things, isn't it? I'm like, yeah, I've got a bit of Scottish in me, but then a lot of people do. But then I sort of was like, it feels nice because I've spent so much time in yeah. that country, and yeah. I, I just, I love it. Like, yeah, and so it's nice to be able to go. Yeah, this is sort of my tartan. All right. Well, I'll have to. Well, oh, next time, next time we'll do an interview. You can be in your your kilt. I think that's uh, both of us. Yeah. yeah all right. Yeah, okay. Kilts. Deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so with Outlander being such, I guess it must be such a big commitment, like the, the amount of time, like year in, year out that you are there on set. When it comes to your movies, are you, do you have to select scripts that work with your schedule? Mm -hmm. Like are there scripts that, for example, come in and you're like, I would love to have done that, yeah. but it's just not going to work with the show. Yeah. Yeah. There's been quite a few. And I think it is exactly that, you know, Outlander, we shoot generally uh, sort of 10 months a year. Um, and then in the time off, it's, it normally works out about six months. 
And in that time, we have a lot of commitments we have to do, press, uh, etc. So fitting in a project can be really tough. Um, so I have been very lucky being able to fit stuff in. But yeah, it's it's not always... I've had to pass up on a few things. In fact, there was one recently, uh, Mr. Malcolm's List, which is a, a period piece, uh, sort of a Jane Austen style uh, movie and that I was attached to and I was supposed to do it. And then just with the pandemic and and timing of Outlander, it didn't work out. But um, yeah. Has, are there any, are there, you don't have to say what, the, what they are, but were there any sort of like really big ones that you're like, oh, come on, can we not make this work? Yeah, there's there's been a few. And you know, it can sometimes it can almost be a couple of weeks. You just want them to push by two weeks and you're like, please. <laughs> but um but you know, then you you know, one door closes, another opens and um it it has so far been, you know, very beneficial to be an outlander and it certainly helped me get other stuff. Yeah, you said like it, it changed your life like dramatically, I imagine. Like from is it is it almost like, you know, black and white how much everything changed after getting the part in Outlander. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I was a jobbing actor and auditioning for stuff and getting close on things but i think it just puts you in a new bracket um you know you get you get offered stuff you know outright which is brilliant and also um i guess being a leading man yeah you get to to get into a different category which is great yeah so one of the films that i want to talk about because you're working it's, i told you it got hot in here i'm um, i'm absolutely pouring it must be that whiskey <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the answer Ooh, is more, more of it. whiskey more yeah. yeah indeed um you worked with them um, uh, so when you interview, uh, when I've interviewed uh, comedy actors, comedians, like sometimes they can be incredibly funny on screen, but when you interview them, they're not sort of naturally funny, which is not a problem because yeah. they're not expected to be. But sometimes it can be a bit sort of like, you know, you sit down with uh, with someone and they're like, hello. Yeah. No, I'll answer questions about the film. And you're like, oh, yeah. all right. Yeah. Um, but one person you've worked with who I, I, to interview is just like this crazy, surreal brilliant journey is kate mckinnon who you oh, worked with yeah on the spy who dumped me yeah she's brilliant she was so fun to work with and, and absolutely she's one of these people who's you know you expect a comedian to be funny in real life and sometimes they're not mm. um she's very funny in real life but she's also she's super intelligent you have to be to be a comedian i think to to be coming up with that material and she just works so hard i remember like every take she'd be writing down notes writing alt, alt lines uh she would she would she worked so hard she whilst we were in um budapest where we shot she taught herself to speak Hungarian, like within a couple of weeks. Like she's that wow intelligent and that hardworking. Yeah, that's incredible. Mm. Did you? No. <laughs> I think after a few palinkas, I could thought it sounded like Hungarian, but no, yeah. no, yeah. I think I managed to say hello, and I can't remember how to say that now. <laughs> See ya. There you go. See ya. See ya. Which is pretty easy to remember. Yeah, that's yeah. It's pretty easy to remember. So Palinka, that I think I I had a few of those when we were in Budapest. That's the, the that's the the regional beer. Yeah, the local yeah, beer. That's probably what's coming out of me now as well. <laughs> I, really am. I can only apologise for wow. the heat in here. It's you you're know, not sweating at all though. No, I I am, but I haven't been for a run today. Or done any exercise in the past 10 or, years. Or drank a body weight of, of <laughs> tequila last night. Oh, man. That's what it'll be, yeah. yeah hey, I'll be the bloody tequila. Yeah, no, Delightful. it's... it's um, a tequila. You see, this is... And I feel stupid saying this, but, um, but someone once said to me, tequila is... Um, tequila is the... Uh, it's, it's different to all other alcohols because all other alcohols are a depressant, whereas tequila is a stimulant. stimulant. Yeah, and obviously... You know, I did science at A-level, so I should be like, no, it's still an alcohol. It's still a depressant. Shut up. But I, for a long time, I was like, that's I why that. That's why I drink tequila. Yeah. 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 And you don't get a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, you don't get a hangover if you just drink tequila. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cut to you waking up on your sofa with a bit of cold pizza stuck to your chest. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a hangover, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, so mm. I, I, I feel like I didn't give you fair warning for just how hot our studio no, gets. No, you did give me warning. Yeah, mm. I just I, I sweat profusely, mm. and uh, it's a, a common theme of my life. I think is sweat over sweating too much, mm. especially in audition situations. I was going to tell you just then. I uh, so I remember one of the first auditions I had in LA, and I um I went in in this like light blue shirt, and it's all sort of you know very summery, <laughs> and I sat down in in a chair similar to this, and um. I think I waited like 40 minutes and it was just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And, and they called me in. I looked down and I literally sweated <laughs> through my whole shirt. So before I went, I ran downstairs to my manager who was there at the time. And he, he's a big lad. He's, he's a big lad. He, I mean, you know, as we gave, I said, give, just give me your shirt. Give me your shirt. So he gave me this like white oversized shirt. So I must have walked in just looking like a mess, sort of dripping sweat, this 
baggy oversized white shirt <laughs> just like hi i'm what you're looking for <laughs> did you get it yeah no <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah, yeah. would well, you like la though it's uh it's i find it quite a strange place i've never yeah. fallen in love with it as much as other u.s cities what what are your thoughts um i, I have a real love love hate with it i've gone through so many experiences there i mean i when i first started going there you know auditioning you know i i had very little money i, I couldn't drive mm -hmm. i used to go everywhere by bus so i'd go to all my auditions by bus but i mean i'd get up at sort of five in the morning get on a bus and you'd be traveling for hours all over the city with piles of scripts because it was before emails and things you know i remember going into like paramount studios i just got off the bus and they're like should we sir we'll validate your car and i'm like uh, no i got the bus and they're like, like what no one gets the bus no one gets it they're like there's a bus and uh it just, I've been through so many highs and lows there, but I, I do enjoy to visit. Yeah. I, I It must be different now going there mm. after after the success of Outlander, though. I mean, I get what you're saying. I think LA is one of those places where if you if you are sort of like starting out and you don't know anyone, it can be more than any other city I found really lonely. Yeah. But the minute you're sort of, you know, the phone's ringing and people know who you are and like, you know, it is obviously it's Hollywood. So it, yeah. it is a very different place. Yeah, it is. And I... I, I absolutely have noticed, you know, now, I mean, I, I had, it sort of really hit me. I was doing the LA marathon a couple of years ago and, uh, there was a huge billboard of Outlander <laughs> and we ran <laughs> down sunset past this billboard. I remember just thinking, wow, like there it is. Like right? there's everything. And years before, I remember the same part of sunset. It's just below Chateau. It's, there's that wild West bar. Um, there's a star Wars nearby. And I remember walking past it at that time and I had had like, I had, I just had no money left and I was just completely despondent. I was like, how the hell am I going to survive? Like, you know, so then cut to a couple of years later and sort of, I guess, on the other side of it and seeing some success. It's been brilliant. What's that like? It must be such a surreal moment to run past a billboard that you'd seen a billion times, like when you were starting out. Yeah. To then see your face on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is, it is a pinch me moment, but it's also, it's weird. It's like you, it's, it's almost like it's not real. I don't know. Almost like, I don't know. It's not really sunk in. Um, but it, it is rewarding and it's so nice when, I mean, even men in kilts recently, there were a lot of billboards up there and it's just, it's great to see your work up there and, you know, being celebrated. Yeah. That wild West restaurant, what's it called? Saddle ranch or something. Yes, I, yes. I can't. Yeah. 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 Um, I went there once. It's a, tour, it's a tourist, it's a tourist place. Yeah. I wouldn't, I, I was, I think, I, I mean, it was a stupid place to go. Cause I think I wanted, I'd been in LA for a while and I'd been to a lot of diners and I was like, I need some veg. And I imagine because they'll probably do veg there because they do sort of meat and then veg and I'll just get, I'll get, I'll get a nice side of something green yeah. and, and it was green. It was mm. also fried. Yeah, I've got yes, of course, fried and in a bun. Yep. Yeah, with Every, cheese on top. Yeah, everything is like just mm. swimming in butter. But I mean, that's just that place. The, the food in LA has got so much better. I mean, like you know. Yeah, it has. Yeah, I, I do enjoy. It. As I said, I've also got, I've got a business partner and I've got a, a business there. You know, we have about six members of staff there, so I do, um, I do now have a sort of base there as well. So it's oh, it's cool. Yeah. Have you got a place there or do you just stay um, at like hotels? Just stay wherever. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm considering buying something there actually. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice. To, uh, yeah. It'd be nice to go there. That's great. Cause Maybe I got a saddle ranch. <laughs> just above it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's I could be cooking up a buttery smell. Green stuff. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I can smell the fried vegetables. Taste. <laughs> it's how vegetables should be. Yeah. Uh, deep fried. Uh, so I read that, um, in terms of Outlander, I read William Shatner is a fan, which I think is possibly the greatest sentence. I, I, I'd, that w if I was in Outlander, I'd be like, William Shatner is yeah. a fan yeah. of the show. Yeah. Um, have you have you heard from him? Have you met him? Yeah, we've hung out a couple of times. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? What a weird world. Um, yeah, we, we sort of met on social media and uh, he's quite a character. And, and we, he, went, we went to his ranch um so i've seen him ride he's an incredible um what's the word for it i guess um horseman yeah uh, i think horseman, horseman is the right word yeah isn't I'm it i'm sure there's a certain term for it which one is it is it generations is it generations which is he's in or is it is it one of the others there's a definitely one of the star tricks which has him doing some very very nifty horsemanship i'm yeah. sure he was competing in uh this reigning competition where they have to bring the horse in, it has to sort of turn 
I think 360 or whatever on the spot and they have to ride and just do all these things. We have to mm. stop and move it around. It's just using this one rein. And yeah, he's incredible. And we went for dinner a couple of times. Um, but yeah, it, it is again, mad to sort of know that or meet someone of such great fame and popularity. Um, and, and he's still going. I mean, he's, you know, still active and, and, and working. And he must be in his 80s, is he? I think so. Yeah. I mean, it must be something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, amazing. Did he take you somewhere nice? Was it a nice place? Saddle I Ranch? I, no, not the Saddle Ranch. I think we went for sushi the first time. I think I paid for it. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, second time we were in the ranch, and it was this, this ranch in uh, the valley, and, and it's amazing to have this bar there, and you literally people can ride up and tie their horse up at the bar and have a drink like wow. you're in some i don't know western it's <laughs> amazing cannot believe captain kirk made you pay <laughs> kirk yeah yeah i'll be getting that yeah. <laughs> did he say did he actually say he was leaving or did he say i'm just going to the bathroom the restroom sorry i'm just going to the restroom i'll be uh, i'll be back in a second yeah and just disappeared he's been gone for a while yeah where, where is he yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> on his horse and <laughs> seen galloping past yeah. yeah, that's that's when you know he's leaving. The staff are untying his horse outside. Yeah. He's just straight on it, there's hops no, on it. There isn't really any sort of quiet getaway, though, is there? I mean, you're going to be <laughs> spotted, aren't you? But um, yeah, no, I mean, incredible. You know, it's amazing the people you get to meet out, out there as well. Yeah. Kirk, though, man. That's mm. cool. That's really mm. cool. Um, so another movie uh, that I, um, I saw of yours not so long ago, um, which... Not that I'm comparing the release of a movie to a global pandemic, but it must have been a little bit frustrating, the timing of the release of Bloodshot. Because I think, if I remember rightly, it came out the Friday or the week of, or maybe the week before we went into lockdown, it got its theatrical release. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Yeah. It's actually, that's, you know, I've had three movies come out during the pandemic. <laughs> so I would love one day to be <laughs> people be able to go see my work. But um yeah, it it was it was it was a build up. I don't think it was it was different in America at that point to the UK. Um but we were doing a lot of press. We were out there we had the premiere and I remember actually of the day, you know, people started emailing saying, "Hey, I'm actually not going to come. I'm a bit scared about coming to the movie theater." Um you know, none of us really knew what what was going on and and we had very little information. Um so we went ahead with the premiere and it was a success. It probably a super spreader of the time, who knows. <laughs> but um but it for me that movie I just had such a blast you know to work with such incredible people you know I mean Vin Diesel is an enigma he's such a character and um, to be in a big big show like that was so fun. I want to believe I want I I want the story to be that Vin called you and that at the end of the phone like you heard his gravelly voice like Hey Sam this is Vin I want you for my movie. He he, he didn't do that but he has since sent me messages occasionally. And he'll talk like that. Right? So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the most amazing thing. But when he's talking, sometimes he gets really quiet and then he doesn't enunciate anymore. Then you just don't know what he's saying. And you're just like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he just, he gets so, he t he just gets so vin. He becomes, he becomes himself um, to a factor of 10. But he's, yeah, I mean, uh, the biggest heart, I think, of, of, of a man. I think, you know, he really. Do you want me for this movie or, or not? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yes, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you mean? He did. I remember on set one day, he did take me aside and he was telling me something about the scene, and I, I had no idea what he was saying. He was just talking, and it was really, it was going to be really good. And I just was like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, we're going to do this. I hope that's not important information. Was that yeah. was he telling me where the squibs are going off? Yes, <laughs> God, God. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it was. Yeah, just so fun. I had such a blast on it. It felt like a, a holiday, to be honest, compared to Outlander. You know, just um, not having to lead something as much, but, you know, just to be on set and doing yeah, comic book stuff. It's like every you know, schoolboy kind of. And you, I mean, you look like you're having fun. I won't lie. You're like Jimmy Dalton, your character, um, <clears throat> it must be fun playing an absolute bastard. Mm. And he really was like, he's a, he's a piece of work. He's a piece of work. But I. I you know, I wanted him like all the characters are supposed to be, you know, that they're they're human, <clears throat> but they've got a flaw. And it's that they've um That's the uh, that's the <clears throat> atmosphere sucking the last of the moisture out of your throat. Now now. I can't breathe. <laughs> you won't you've got you you it's all left I'm your body. To death. This is this is the end. That's it. 
So, uh, yeah, it was nice knowing you. And, and, and you actually, I mean, I sort of coffin. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right. Yeah. Oh. Dexter Fletch is buried over there. <laughs> yeah, Dex, all right, Dex. Um, I must remind people not to do the show. No, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. We're getting some aircon installed or something. Sorry, go on. What were you saying about uh, being a blast and these characters? Oh, yeah. No, just that, he, you know, he, he he's obviously, you know, angry, mm. very angry. Um, uh, but, you know, there's a reason for that. And like his backstory for me, it was quite interesting just thinking about you know how he became that. Mm. And, and he, you know, he used to be or is, a, you know, a good operator. He's... Uh, Ex Navy SEAL, and and then he's lost his legs, and I think in in some sort of trauma, and I think that's really driven him. You know, he's he's angry, he's angry at the military, he's angry at himself, he's um, for all these reasons, and I think yeah, he's been he feels like he's been passed over as well. He didn't get the technology that 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 Vin Diesel's character got, so I think he's he's pissed about it. Yeah, it's more the fact that he does that thing that I hate. I hate it when I see it, which is that he holds one nostril and snots out of the other. <laughs> I just I, when I see that happen yeah. now, I will clarify that I'm sure I don't exercise very much, and mm. I'm sure if you exercise a lot and you do that, probably there is some need for it. I'm guessing like there's a build up of snot in one nostril, and you you just have to it's get it out. Totally unnecessary. It's totally unnecessary in that moment. He, he, I mean, it's like it actually that note came from our fight choreographer who was actually an ex um, military guy. He's brilliant. He's done a lot of things. Um, Vin's movies and he was just like yeah man you should just you know he was he's real like alpha male kind right, of guy right, right. he's like yeah you know it's all about sort of bravado and stuff and just blow maybe blow your nose or spit and i'm just like yeah that's cool i'm gonna try that yeah yeah it's cool i mean it works in the movie i'm just like oh it's like spitting i i just like i just i mean this is more about me but i just don't know at what point in your life you, you got i've got too much saliva in my mouth i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna have to spit it out it's just there's an excess in my mouth yeah yeah, I I have to admit I do spit occasionally, but that's when it's only when I'm exercising. Right, I, I, right. I, I'm giving you a free pass on that, man. Yeah, I, yeah. again, I, it, I'm not. I cannot comment on exercise because I don't do it. So, or if I'm about to fight someone, I just, <laughs> I blow my nose. Do you, I mean you've just given anyone you might end up with a, in a fight with a, a warning? Now you, that's it. You see him spit; he's coming for you. <laughs> or if he sweats profusely, that that means he's. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Means he's just done an interview with Alex. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why he'll have a very dry throat. You're at an advantage. He's weak. He's dehydrated. <laughs> now get him. <laughs> Now's the time to take him. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed that film. Um, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I, I sort of say, oh, it's a shame it came out at the time of the global pandemic, but it's, um, it went on to have a massive uh, life on uh, VOD. It did really well on VOD, I think, you know, and I think also, you know, Dave Wilson, who directed it, you know, his first, first movie. Incredible. And uh, his, his attention to detail on set, he was brilliant. He never, he was stressed, of course, but he never really showed it. And he just, he was great fun to work with. And I, mm. I just, um, for me, it was just a great experience. And, and I, yeah. I'd love to have. I wish. I wish there was another one. It'd be great. Mm. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, I mean, you're you're really great in action scenes. Like you're really great in the action scene. That big fight you have with Vin. Like you know, it's uh, mm. it's up there with oh. when Vin goes toe to toe with the the Rock in Fast Five. We actually shot a whole sequence in a in a in a swimming pool that was as warm as this room was, <laughs> and uh, for a week, and uh, it was boiling hot. I mean, this whole action scene was basically my character and his go head to head at the end of the movie and it was like something out of alien or aliens it was you know i had you know obviously i strap him i bring him out of the water and we're sort of this water going everywhere and it was it was spectacular and it all got cut it was a real shame because it was such a, a really cool sequence oh that is a shame yeah that is a shame probably mm. maybe on dvd maybe on the blu-ray i think it is actually there you go yeah there you go mm. um yeah because i i enjoy watching you uh do action um because i mean even the spy who dumped me that's a comedy but yeah uh, that um that cafe fight at the start, near the start, is uh, mm. it's it's that's a proper full blown. I mean, it's got your comedy elements, like especially the end where your character's standing there, and you you've got that lovely trope at the end of an action sequence where everything's still, and then a light fitting just like falls Bing. to the ground. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or actually, the um, I think the last person my character sort of kills, or or at least knocks out, he, he uh, drowns him in a bowl of I think it's souffle or something. But it was it was supposed to be a nod to James Bond in the fight sequence in Casino Royale in the bathroom where he's drowning him in the sink. 
So we did it in a, in a bowl of souffle. Yeah. Is it souffle? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Oh, cheese. I had sort. custard written it down. It might be custard. Well, yeah, no, because isn't it weird that if you drown in so I if I was being drowned in something, I'd rather it was custard. So yeah, that'd be lovely. Yeah. I could deal with that. Yeah, I'd be happy about custard. Nom, 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 dead. Not souffle, no. No. But um, Death you, by custard. I mean, you mentioned Bond, and it would be remiss of me not to ask because obviously the the the, uh, the circus is ongoing. But your name is uh, is still on every single list when they talk about the new Bond. Mm. How do you feel about it all? Yeah, I I mean, there's there's a long list, right? And uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like you don't want to talk about it because there isn't anything to talk about. I mean, it's all media, and it's all just there's there's no weight to it at all. There's no truth to it. Um, but having said that, you know, it, you can't help them then think, God, it would be amazing. And I have been up for Bond. I went up for it when they did Bond 21 and it was, um, it was an amazing experience and I was, you know, completely out of my, my, my depth. But I think now, I, I mean, I feel the right age for it. I feel capable enough to do it. I'd love the opportunity to, to, uh, to throw my, my hat in the ring. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I man, but who knows? You know. I mean, we're friends, but I, I think you'd be a fantastic Bond. I think there's been glimmers of that in, in a lot of the things that you've mm. done. Mm. And um, yeah, it, it'd be great. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's a fascinating character. And I think you look back at the books, he's actually not a very likable man. Um, he's a bit of a psychopath himself. And I think that's why I loved SAS, you know, having any source material, having something to draw upon. And I think that's why I loved SAS, you know, had Andy McNabb, this this uh, special forces operator and his books, you know, so much to draw upon. And I think any project like that is great when you get source material. Um, so Bond would be good because you'd have the books, obviously, to, to look, to go back on. But um, yeah, anything like that. So mm -hmm. it's a gift for an actor, I think. Yeah, SAS was a lot of fun. That's a really, really fun movie. Thank you. I, I, I mean, like the, the shorthand, in case anyone is yet to see it, um, you should. SAS Red Notes, it's basically Die Hard on the Channel Tunnel, yeah. but with a, a lot more to it because, like you say, Andy McNabb, um, you know, and how he's imbued uh, your character uh, with himself and his understanding of psychopathy, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's just a, a fascinating character, isn't he? And and I mean, the first half of of his like experiences as a, a special forces operator and his the the missions he's been on, and he's very open about that, and he'll talk to you about it, and he's written books about it, so you can read them. and And it's just you know from his experiences in Northern Ireland to to South America to to Africa, you know he he's been in some pretty dark places. Uh, not all of them, you know, probably. For the, for the greater good, you know, I mean, it's just, it's really interesting when you start to find out, you know, mm. what, what British interests really means. Um, but then you talk to him about psychopathy and how, you know, he's discovered recently that he is a psychopath and he's a good psychopath. And I think um, then as an actor, how do you, how do you play a psychopath? Um, all of, all of these things. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, it was a lot to, to take on board, but he was great, a great help and a great aid during the whole of that shooting. And totally not what I expect. When I met him, you have this image in your head of what Andy McNabb is yeah. going to be, like this sort right. of stoic, yeah. hard man, like, hard you man. know, like, I don't want to go near him. He's sort of scary. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah, you, you expect, like, you know, a hulk of a man who's going to break your wrist, probably sort of, I don't know, look like he could kill you with, mm. one, with one look. And then Andy walks in, you know what, mate? <laughs> You're right, yeah, 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 you're right, yeah. And he's got a bigger smile, and he talk, grins a lot, and he, but he does, he does, he holds, he holds your, he holds your eye, doesn't he? He holds it, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, oh god. Yeah. That's all I remember hearing that day in Budapest. It's that great sequence, which is meant to be uh, Regent's Park, but it's obviously in Budapest. Um, which uh, the storming of the house, uh, mm. the swallows mm. base. Uh, but yeah, I remember being there, and just all I could hear was, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's so accommodating. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Should I do this? Should I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that. Do that. That'll be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it, it, there, there, you know, so many moments, you know, like there's a moment where my character kind of, he kills someone with a mobile phone. And, and Andy, you know, you ask him, well, how does that work then? Oh, yeah, you go get him. And you just get it around his neck and you really get it in his larynx and you just, all, your, all your force, use your body weight and you just get in there. And he's just, but he's just so, it's, it's so matter of fact as well. It's like, yeah, yeah, well, that's how you do it. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's how you would kill a man. Okay. Yeah. Right. Good. Yeah. Um, you've you've normalised this, haven't you? This yeah. is just like yeah, this is how you yeah. butter toast. Yeah, you get the knife, you put the butter on the butter, and you just spread it. Yeah. yeah, but he's talking about cutting someone's larynx out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and then he, he just he would do things. You know, I mean, 
just his, I guess, his training. But you know, I remember lunchtime, he would, you know, as soon as they called lunch, he'd go down, he'd scoff it down, you know, go to get it down. And then he'd lie down on set and just fall asleep. And he'd sleep throughout the lunch hour and then back up and he'd go again. He did, the man didn't sleep apart from that. You know, I wonder if that's a military rations thing. It's like, be. if you've got food, you eat it eat and it. you rest when you can. Rest when you can because you're back always ready. It, yeah. yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, we're, we're nearing the end uh, of our uh, of our uh, lovely chat. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, one final thing to do, because uh, obviously the show is called Just the Facts. Uh, so what I've done is I have trawled uh, that uh, wonderful well of misinformation that is the internet and found out four facts uh-huh. about you. And I just need you to confirm whether these are, in fact, facts. Fact or no fact? Fact or falsehood. Falsehood. Fact okay. oh. or falsehood. Great, go on then. Hit All me. right, four to get through. Here's your first one. Mm. You are certain we have been visited by aliens. <laughs> Where did you find that? That's, I think you just make these up. Um, I can give you the source at the end. I don't want to. I don't want to jinx. Don't want to jinx it. Uh, I, I, I mean, I would. I would say it's probably fact. Really? Yeah. I'm into all that. I'm into it. I am. Too. I really do. I think there's. Yeah. It. It just is. It. It's impossible for us to think that we're the only life form out there. And you look at. And you look at statistics. I mean, uh, yeah, there has to be other life forms out there, and way more advanced than us. Yeah. And you think they've actually been here though? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Like historically, or like they walk among us. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not going to say Elon Musk is one, but, <laughs> but, but I would say, I, no, I think, you know, just looking at, I mean, I've watched all of, I've just loved those documentaries and, you know, the ancient aliens and all that sort of stuff. And then, um, and I know all the sightings and, you know, recently NASA released, you know, images of these craft that are flying and then goes into, goes into the sea. Um, there's been, there's been numerous times they've been released and we sort of, people don't really aware of it or mm. we just sort of think, oh, well, it's nothing, but, but, um, yeah, maybe I want to believe, but I I, I do think so, yeah. And the X-Files, the yeah. truth is out there, yeah. But it's interesting you say that, you see, because I, I think it's one of the greatest uh, tricks that has ever been played, which is that the minute you go, yeah, I mean, I think we should ask some questions about this. People go, oh, one of those, are you? Conspiracy theorists, oh, yeah, yeah UFOs. And it's like somehow to actually ask that question, you are immediately put in this category of like, uh-huh, right, yeah, you think there's aliens, as yeah. opposed to... This is a totally legitimate question. I am kind of like just asking it, and you yeah. are now. I'm now. I'm a, a nut job because I'm asking it. There, I just it's a big bigger picture, isn't it? But it's like you know, our technology is so inferior. I mean, we still drive vehicles with pedals and levers, right? They basically are. We're still you know combustion engines. Our, our technology is is we're getting better, but there are different kinds of technology as well. And I think you know there's there's probably other life forms out there that have maybe different ways that they've evolved. And um, I, I'm fascinated. I think it's what, my one regret is that I might not see the time when we get to go out there. Maybe it was Kirk that did it, <laughs> but I, I, and growing up with Star Trek as a kid, but yeah. I want to, I want to go out there. Oh yeah. yeah. I, and pick up the check, Sam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. The, the, dark, the, the bleakest thing I ever thought, and it's not that bleak, but I did sort of, there was a period where I was like, when uh, it was the 21st of December, 2012, uh, and the Mayan calendar was supposed to dictate the end of the world yeah. and it was all going to finish. Yeah. And there was a part of me that was like, I actually hope it does because then I'll know that I was here at the end and I'm not going to miss out on anything in the future. Yeah. And also, like, I want to believe that that they're right and so that will show everyone <laughs> <laughs> see i told you yeah i'll be standing on a tectonic plate as it goes vertical guide i told you so <laughs> uh all right good so we're going with uh, that is a fact you are certain we've been visited by aliens uh this is an easier one you're a pescatarian mm. um i was brought up a pescatarian right vegetarian pescatarian uh yeah and uh, i have dabbled recently in veganism and every other form okay um interestingly I was, I was a vegetarian until i was about 24 i first went to los angeles and i was having meetings for superman i had quite a few meetings for that which and one superman returns the brandon ralph oh, one okay singer yeah and uh, i had quite a few meetings and they were like well you need to you need to bulk up you need to get strong so i had to start going to the gym i'd never really done that and I met this Russian trainer. You must eat protein, protein. And I'm like, okay. So that was the first time I had chicken and meats, and uh, and it was quite a revelation for me. 
because being a vegetarian, I was always so tired and suddenly I'm like, oh, I have energy and I'm satiated and yeah. Yeah. So it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably go back to it. Kind of dodged a bullet with that movie if I'm, if I'm perfectly honest. Not a uh, great film. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a character again, I'd, I think I'd quite like to play, uh, with the right people around it. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. If you did, you'd be one of the first, few people who played Batman and Superman. That would be cool. Oh, that's a cool <laughs> fact, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You have to get Superman first for that to be a fact. But yeah, once you get Superman, you'll be one of the few people who's been Batman and Superman. Well, one of the first jobs I did, this, there's a, you know, we, we all have them when you start off in careers, you do some pretty poor jobs. I mean, they're just something you'd probably not look to back on. I did this movie called Young Alexander the Great mm-hmm. from Macedonia. And uh, that's the full title. And it was produced by <laughs> Snappy. Ilya Salkind, who was... Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And he sort of really took me under his wing. And he, he an interesting guy. And he would just always talk about Christopher Reeve and, uh, you know, so you, you're the next soups. You, you're the next soups. And he just he just loved it. And it was just so interesting to hear about that era and, and yeah. creating those movies. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so uh, that is a fact then. I'm going to go with that's a fact. The internet is doing well today. You're yeah, a vegetarian. It is, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, you were. It's crazy, isn't it? Like, you, to go... You can like, find anything there. When you're, when you're a vegetarian, though, or, or a vegan, um, you know, because I'm, I'm a vegan, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I went, I did, although I joke about not exercising, I did go see a, a trainer, and they were like, oh, and I said, I'm a vegan. They were like, this is going to be difficult because it is all about like the protein that I'm not saying you can't be a vegan and be fit and exercise. But I think the root one for a lot of trainers is, well, you need meat, you need, uh, you need protein, you yeah. need chicken, which is nonsense because you can, you can tot. I mean, there's so much protein in, in vegetables and, and you look at, I mean, that was an age old thing about gorillas, you know, like I mean, they're full muscle and they, or cows or whatever. But, but um, yeah, I think it's just, again, a sort of a, a hangover from like, you know, the, the, the heyday of bodybuilding where you know you had to eat like six steaks a day and just eggs yeah and and you actually don't you know. yeah i remember uh when hugh jackman was, tra- was interviewing hugh jackman for something and he was training for he was getting ready for logan and suddenly like oh, wow just halfway halfway through the <laughs> interview someone brings in a steak must, for him must eat. it's literally like <laughs> the, at this time he has to eat this steak yeah because it's like so regimented the yeah. preparation for stuff like that yeah i mean i kind of want to do something like that you know where you have to like mm. Really, really goes to town. Yeah, steak, steak an hour. <laughs> yeah, and lift heavy things all the time. Well, I mean, I we joke about you having played Batman or and then playing Superman. Would you? Would you? Would a superhero movie be something that appealed to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I don't love those movies. Mm. I have to admit, I think some are great. Um, I, I have met for something quite, you know, a couple of years ago, and then things happened, but. Yeah, there was. I was sort of meeting on something that was could have been really, really fun, um, but I, I don't know. I guess uh, they've all been done a bit, haven't they? Yeah. We'll have to see what happens with what uh, the new phase of Marvel, and, yeah, you know, the Eternals and everything. It's yeah. sort of. I, I mean, like you know, I'll probably get the ire of Marvel fans and MCU fans, but you know, for me, Endgame really felt like a big full stop in the universe for me. So yeah. I, it's a wait and see one for me. We'll have to yeah. see what happens with this. Uh, the future but i feel like i went on a massive journey that i was so invested in mm. and i don't know that i'm ready to go i'm ready to start over again oh, just keep going yeah <laughs> i mean the darker the better definitely you know I, I like you know the darker guys and there's so many great ones out there now isn't there yeah yeah i mean the nolan trilogy yeah mm. it's like that's it's like maybe sam hewen could be the batman <laughs> Swe- sweaty man who's that sweaty man <laughs> sweaty man <laughs> all right we've got two left and then we can get out of this uh, this Sweat box. Um, your biggest fear is being trapped in a lift. Oh, God, this is it, isn't it? Um, this is your biggest this fear. Is getting there, yeah. Mm. But it doesn't say with Alex Zane. I think um, it's that's probably true, actually. Yeah. yeah. Out of everything. Yeah. Well, I just, I'm, you know, I'm quite a big guy and I think a small lift and mm-hmm. if there's no air, no oxygen. No water, no whiskey. Then, uh, <laughs> then it's, the heating on, the heating no on, tissues, no tissues. Yep. Uh, it's that sounds pretty horrendous. Yeah, that could be awful. Have you? You've, this isn't from experience, though. You've never been trapped in. A lift. No, no, never been trapped in a lift. No, right. no. Mine is sharks. Full stop. Ah, uh, well, yeah. I don't know. I have this. Fa- I think we all have a fascination with them, don't we? Oh yeah, I love them, but yeah. I mean, it's I can't go in the sea because like, sharks. Uh, yeah, 
I even when you're a kid, you know, when you watch Jaws and there then you, you and then you're in the swimming pool mm-hmm. and you can't get in the swimming pool anymore. You're like, mm-hmm. what is going on? Just in case somehow it it somehow got in. Got in. This is literally why I failed my 25 meter swimming certificate. I climbed out after about 19 ve- meters because I was uh, convinced there was a shark in the pool that someone just hadn't checked that it had somehow got in through one of the vents. Yeah, and- the vents. It's yeah. always the vents because it could have got in if it was small enough. It could have swam through and then grown in the pool. <laughs> no one's noticed it. And then one day, it just happens. It's been feeding on children. <laughs> just really lax lifeguards. I, just, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe there's just some red dye. Do you know, I was a lax lifeguard. Uh, really? One of the many jobs I did being a jobbing actor was I was a life I'm really ashamed to say that I, I had no t- real training. I mean, I had a bit of training, but um, there were two of us and we used to go and uh, while one was watching, the other one would cover themselves up with a blanket and have a nice snooze. So we just alternated all day just having a snooze. It was lovely, but um, <laughs> probably not the best. <laughs> no, no, no. Probably did never say which pool that is. Just no, in case. I don't want to say which pool. <laughs> There was always one not on, on standby, but uh, yeah, we just weren't the most um, yeah. motivated. If you're going to get into trouble in that pool, just be of a size where one can get you out. Oh, we would have just said stand up because it was about <laughs> <laughs> it was about this deep. So, yeah. all right, final fact. Uh, this one kind of disturbs me, but I'm 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 assuming it's it's not real. Uh, you eat eggs with ketchup. Who doesn't? Really? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, like an omelette or something. Okay. Is that weird? I mean, I think it's a bit weird, but I don't know. I've never met anyone who eats eggs with ketchup. You're the first, but I'm, I'm sure there's probably a community out there that you're part of. Um, Do, I mean, what kind of egg? Like an omelette is one thing, but yeah. like, would you have, I don't know, would you Would you make a boiled egg, cut the top off and fill it with ketchup? No. <laughs> okay. But... Uh, you're mean, not, I, you're I, not appalled I, by I, that I, idea. I don't, I don't <laughs> dislike the idea. I've tried to wean myself off of it, but yeah, there's something about eggs and ketchup I do love. Yeah, I didn't know it was that weird. Oh, uh, maybe it's not. This could be I, me. I, I would say scrambled eggs, you can't. That's just too much. That's disgusting. Right, okay. Yeah, that would be horrible. You draw the line at scrambled eggs. Yeah. But you're cool with filling a boiled egg with ketchup and eating yeah, it. That'd be quite nice, actually. Wow. Yeah. Once I sweat, once I've finished sweating <laughs> in here, I might go do that. Uh, well, we have finished sweating in here. Uh, we can turn on the air con and open door. Sam Hewn, it's Genuinely, always a pleasure to see you, man. Oh, you too, mate. Yeah, really appreciate uh, the sauna. It was really nice. <laughs> My um, gift to you. Yeah, it's been really nice to see you again. <laughs> you too, man. Thank you very much.